Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Personal Finance 101 webinar today, where we will share with you about retirement planning, when and how to start, and who should start. In this session, we will cover several topics on how you can plan financially for retirement, as well as various useful strategies. Speaking today are Joel Yong, a Senior Investment Advisor at IFAS Global Markets, Darren Liu, Investment Advisor at FSM1.com, and Brian Salo from Franklin Templeton. Without further ado, let us welcome our speakers. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, my name is Joel. I'll be bringing to you my part of retirement planning, uh, the complete picture. I guess, firstly, we have to um, address the elephant in the room. Uh, what, are, what are your own thoughts about retirement? Next slide, please. Is it any of these? Or is it something else? Well, I believe these are all uh, very relevant thinking, and we have often heard this uh, uh, before. As the title suggests, uh, these are all myths or a very, very traditional way of thinking. Of course, the list is non-exhaustive. So we, uh, there are definitely others. For example, um, you may have heard like having more children so that they can look after uh, uh, the person as they grow older. Yeah, and the list goes on and on. So in this webinar, we aim to give you an alternate view uh, about retirement and show you that actually retirement is not as scary as it seems. So over here, just to give you all of you a very simplified version of a typical retirement plan where we stay employed through our years and save and assuming nothing goes wrong with the yearly savings and investments that we have, our savings should go up. Uh, of course, this is an ideal situation and we know that uh, things seldom go this smoothly. Uh, but for the purpose of this diagram, we see that uh, the investments with, without any security or without any uh, uh, proper retirement plan tend to peak at around 60 years old, uh, assuming we stay employed till then. Yeah, we, start to, we will start to draw down on our savings and even going into the negative zone over the years. Uh, this is where we most likely need uh, our children or, our, or even government support. So on to the next slide, uh, we now take that previous plan and we compare uh, against a proper retirement plan uh, with retirement income, where even after retirement, the money will continue to rise uh, and not fall. So it is a slow rise, but it's still a rise nonetheless. That being said, uh, you will not eat into your own retirement fund as per the previous graph. So to achieve that, let's firstly look at what makes up retirement. Now, financial security. I always advocate that we need to get ourselves protected first before we talk about earning for retirement. Why? This is so we don't have any outstanding liabilities to weigh down on our retirement income. So then financial security, what does it comprise of? Let us first look at this graph. Uh, it depicts a normal person's savings for retirement, give or take. Uh, if there are no hiccups like serious illnesses, uh, i.e. cancer or even accidents. But are situations always this rosy? Well, I'll leave you to think about this while we move on. Next, we come to the protection for uh, our child uh, and children. Who should we protect first and foremost? Definitely ourselves as parents, because simply because we are the providers of our families, we should always protect ourselves so that our families can be covered for unexpected losses. For example, in the event of loss of income due to uh, cancer or even death. So, and to continue, we should also always look at uh, to at least cover our commitments and liabilities. Uh, so. Uh, sort of your, your, your car loans or, or whatnot. Yeah, that is the bare minimum. Yeah, some plans are actually very well suited for these sort of uh, purposes. Now, if I may bring attention to the next graph here, uh, this is an ideal situation where there's protection for both you and your children. 
but actually not so much of protection, but uh, there's more of having prep education funds for your young children. Therefore, the money will be there if the child does eventually uh, head on to further studies in a university. So in that way, uh, if anything happens, it will not eat into your quest for retirement income. And coming to the topic of children's education, here is an example of what you can do uh, when you are preparing for your children's education and how to save for it. So if you have started early, very good, because options are plenty in the form of uh, regular savings plans, education plans, and other various forms of investment. However, as the child ages, the options gradually dwindles and only investment tools with higher returns and or lump sum investments have the ability to give you the returns you need within the shorter period of time frame as shown in the chart. When savings for your child's education, right, we must know that educational plans, uh, savings plans are not to be confused with protection plans. The life assured in the case of education plans will then be on your child and not you. This is to give you the best returns due to the lower cost of protection on your child and thus greater savings value. Uh, to explain further, if we as the parents are the life assured, the cost of protecting us or insuring us will definitely be higher than protecting our child. And thus uh, comes the greater savings value here. So on my last slide of being financially secure is mortgage liabilities. I'm sure many of us have heard of and, and used the reducing mortgage term insurance, right? It is the basic form of insurance that uh, property owners have to get. Uh, but have you heard of using term plans to actually cover your mortgage liabilities? Now the question is, which is better? Granted that you pay more for your uh, term plan, the term plan actually has the ability to merge uh, different, different existing plannings that you may have into one single policy. Why? You can use it as a coverage for your property or even two if the sum assured is large enough. It can also function as a payout for your family in case anything untowards happens to you. Another objective is that it can function as a legacy plan for you to leave behind a lump sum of cash uh, when one eventually passes on. Of course, uh, there are no rights or wrong uh, answers here. So we only have to see what objectives we want to, see, to, to meet out of the decisions we make. Uh, with that done, uh, let's move on to being medically secure. Uh, many of us, I think, are familiar with this topic. Uh, it, co it actually comprises of two sections, uh, hospitalization, and the other is, of course, long-term care. So there are different layers of defense against hospitalization bills. Uh, at the top of the ladder, you have your integrated shield plans, your MediShield life. Yeah. Uh, going down the ladder, there is MediSafe, where there's a limit to how much one can withdraw a day. And lastly, if we have none of those, we have to protect ourselves using, using our own pockets, which is your cash. Uh, to sum it all up, MediShield life and integrated shield plans combined, combined to cover you up to 95% of your total hospital bills while limiting your cash outlay to a maximum of $3,000 for panel doctors. But some of you may have uh, previously bought the 100%, uh, those plans with 100% coverage, but uh, it has since uh, changed to a compulsory 5% uh, charge. That's my first statement that it covers up to 95%. So, Please do a review with your respective agents on it as the regulations have changed. Otherwise, uh, you can come to me or my colleagues as well. So with the cost of integrated shield plans uh, rising quickly every five years past the age of 30, it is actually the main culprit for your high running costs in your retirement years. So you may wish to relook at your policies by then and make suitable adjustments. For example, um, 
match the cost of your retirement income. Um, maybe downgrade to a government restructured hospital plan, right? Or if possible, pack your plan to whichever hospital is uh, nearest from your residence. Uh, one example uh, is myself, my par oh, sorry, my parents. My parents actually stay near a government restructured hospital. Therefore, my mom has since downgraded to uh, a, a suitable plan uh, uh, to, to match it to, to uh, the nearest hospital that she, that she stays. Yeah. Yeah, of course, uh, when we talk about it, money plays a part, right? Plus, uh, it makes sense to lower her plans. So uh, why am I stating all these? Uh, because during, and re during retirement, we only have retirement income to sustain us uh, if we were not to burden our children. Uh, we are, if we are no longer working, then yes. For myself, I am part of the sandwich generation where I will still need to help my parents uh, pay for their hospitalization bills. Yeah, so this is one example. So yeah, that is. For the next section, uh, we actually talked about long-term care, which means that in Singapore, we classify the, uh, long-term care as the ability or inability to do the six activities of daily living uh, on the left side of your screen. So this is another part of being medically secure that almost everyone misses out on. Now, fortunately, help is at hand for Singaporeans in the form of casual life and other various supplements. Casual life replaces most of the previous Elder Shield 400. What it does is that it provides lifetime monthly cash payouts as long as the insured remains severely disabled. Its premiums are fully paid using Medisafe. Payouts start at 600 a month and increases annually until age 67 or when a successful claim has been made. However, is it enough? Think about it, 600 a month. Um, if we were to hire a helper, in the case where no one is able to look after us, or uh, even worse, private nurses to attend to us. These costs are actually quite substantial. Uh, therefore, actually insurers have come up with cashew life supplements to add on to the basic cashew life and provide the insured with a bigger boost to the 600. Plans from insurers actually vary and so do the benefits. So be sure to check with us on what we have to offer to better protect yourselves. Yeah? So to mark the end of the section, what some of you may be wondering if you are eligible for Cashew Life. Yes, this is one, one of the questions that will eventually come up. Uh, we have done up a flow chart for you. Do take a look. Uh, do take a minute to go through it and understand. Yeah. Right. I, I know the previous parts are uh, very heavy. I promise all of you that the remaining few slides will get uh, uh, more interesting. Now, then how can how do we earn or how do we get passive retirement income? I think most of us are familiar with a few methods. Uh, the most common of all would be rental income, right? Where we buy additional properties and rent them out to get the uh, to get the cash. Yeah. So the whole point of today's topic, other than being financially and medically secure, is that. We to inform everyone here that instead of working towards a, a sum uh, or a bag of gold for retirement, work towards having a steady stream of income so that the income will not die out on us uh, as we near end of life. And we start with sources of income. You have CPF life, you have investments, uh, annuities are provided by insurers. There's rental income. And of course, for some, uh, there's business income for business owners. The next few slides are actually like some examples of how we can make money and the different tools available work for us during our retirement years. Of course, just a general disclaimer that these examples are mainly some trends that we have observed and uh, it, it is not definitively reflected upon you. We have to know that all of us have different financial capabilities and it is up to us to make the best use 
out of our own financial financial situations to formulate an ideal retirement plan. Uh, please do look at the examples we have provided. If we were to look at this example, by putting cash into the uh, investments and with monies in CPF life, we can get roughly about 800, 800 odd a month, thereabouts. Yeah. And if we were to scale it up, looking at more cash and CPF, uh, we can look to purchase uh, insurance annuities that are provided at the, uh, at the moment uh, to give us another stream of passive income. And to give you a more lavish lifestyle, looking at the third example, I think with this amount of money, there shouldn't be any worries on retirement. But for the sake of this scenario, uh, apart from the previous users for, or, for, cash, for the cash, you can add on properties uh, or rental income to the mix to give you the extra boost in your retirement income. Ultimately, uh, what I would like to say is that uh, we are still able to retire. It is not a very scary term. We just have to make the best out of the situation that we are in. With the passive in income incoming, it's only how lavish a retirement you want it to be. Uh, so I think this slide should be my last slide, uh, which is actually the most important. Uh, the crux of this whole session is to share with all of you that actually managing cash flow is very crucial to retirement. Why? You have to generate enough income to cover for your retirement years and lead your desired lifestyle while being able to pay for your liabilities uh, and still have enough uh, for your children or grandchildren. Uh, but okay, yes. For this part, this last part, it is optional. Normally, we, we will only think about this if we have a, a very big surplus of funds. Huh? So contrary to our beliefs, not all liabilities end at retirement. Yeah, talk to us. Let us formulate a plan for you. Yeah? So that is all for my part. And after this webinar, I hope that everyone has gotten a firmer understanding on retirement. Uh, we have also debunked the myth of being able to retire only if we have a pot of gold. Uh, do let us know in the chat for any inquiries that you may have. Uh, my, colleague, my colleagues and I will be very happy to assist you. I'll now hand you over to my colleague, Darren, for the next part of the webinar. Thank you, everyone. Happy retirement years ahead. Hi. Thank you, Joel. I'm Darren from the Investment Advisory Team. Today, I'll share with you that it is never too young, never too late to start your retirement planning. So I'll touch on the, the investment strategies for retirement, as well as some of the products available on FSM that you can use to build your portfolio. This is an uh, overview of the content that I will be covering in the next few slides. So at any point in time, you have any questions, uh, please type them in the Q&A box, and we will try to address them in the Q&A session later. So first, imagine that there are two friends. We call them Mr. Blue and Mr. Red. Mr. Blue is very proactive and started investing early at the age of 25, right after his first paycheck from his first job. So he contributes about $5,000 every year into an investment until the age of 35, and then no additional investment thereafter. Then we have Mr. Red. Started investing later at age 35 after spending his early years living in comfort and enjoying his life after graduation. He contributes about $5,000 every year into an investment until the age of 60. So assuming that they invest into the same investment that yields about 8% return per annum, who will have a bigger nest egg at the age of 60? So now I'll give you some time to pause and think about it for a second before I review the answer to you shortly. Think about it. One started early and one started late. So who have more? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to review the answer. So the answer is actually Mr. Blue will have a bigger nest egg despite having a lower investment outlay. So surprising, right? So as you can see, Mr. Blue actually only invested 55K in total as he only contributed to the investment for the first 11 years. So as you can see, Mr. Blue actually only 
as you can see, Mr. Red, right? Well, Mr. Red invested uh, 130K in total from age of 35 all the way until 60. So at 60 years old, you can see that Mr. Blue will have uh, over 600K, while Mr. Red will have over 400K. So that's about 200K more. So why is this the case? You may wonder. The answer lies in the power of compound interest. So the concept of it is actually so mind-boggling that uh, Albert Einstein once famously said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. As you can see in the graph at the right side, the compound interest increases exponentially with time, or the simple interest is just a straight line. By starting to invest early, you can take advantage of this powerful force to work in your favor towards your retirement. Whenever people ask me when is the best time to start investing, I will always say that the best time to invest was yesterday. The next best time it is now. Time is of the essence. Firstly, before you start on your investment journey, you have to understand that there's always a trade-off between risk and reward. Investments that generate higher returns will always come with higher risk, be it a potential loss of principal or to see your portfolio value plunge drastically during the weaker market conditions, such as during the global financial crisis or at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic last year. The higher returns are given to compensate investors for the higher risk that they are taking. Remember, there is no best investment in the world. Always remember that one man's meat is another man's poison. The best investment is the portfolio that is able to achieve your expected return within your risk tolerance. Knowing your risk appetite is important as this would determine your asset allocation strategy would be like. Factors such as your risk tolerance, your investment time horizon and goals will narrow down the type of investment products that you can consider. So, based on the assessment of your risk profile, it can be determined how much you should invest in bonds and equities. This slide shows a typical neutral allocation of this strategy. In the expansionary phase, you can overweight and allocate more into equities, such as taking a plus minus 10% of the asset allocation approach. For instance, if you are a balanced investor, you may adopt a plus 10% overweight in equities and hold overall 55% in equities while the remaining 45% in bonds. At FSM1, we advocate diversification as a strategy to mitigate abrupt market swings via a portfolio concept comprising of both equities and bonds. Based on the current economic climate, we suggest to adopt a different weightage in these subsectors as different regions experience varying economic growth rates. A globally diversified portfolio will allow you to benefit from such global economic growth without worrying about over-concentrating your investments within a single region. If you look at this quilt of asset return chart, history has shown that no asset class topped the chart consistently. We would like to imagine our investment portfolio as a soccer team. Equity funds are like your midfielders, while bond funds are like your defenders. For those high-risk investments such as single sector, country, funds, or single stock, we will consider them like our strikers in the team. The strategy here is to cover the entire field because it is too risky to only play with strikers without defending your goalposts. And you also cannot score goals if all your players are defending and not attacking. You can see our model portfolio's asset allocation based on our risk profile under the Manage Portfolio at the Fact Sheet tab. So, what can you do before you start to commit to a set of portfolio would be to think of your investment as buckets. So, the bucket strategy is a method of prioritizing your investment goals based on their level of importance, such as needs, wants, and wishes, and allocating your investment portfolio accordingly. For example, having enough for daily living expenses is typically the most important goal and considered a need. Buying a vintage sports car, on the other hand, may be of lesser importance and considered a wish. Once you establish your priorities, you can then review the timing of your goals. Perhaps you hope to take a vacation during the first year of retirement, or you plan to make a charitable bequest will occur later down the road. After you review the priority and timing of your goals, 
you can organize your investment assets into separate buckets. Each bucket's assets get invested appropriately, taking into account the time until you need the money while still maximizing the potential for growth. So for the first bucket, it contains funds for the immediate needs and emergency. These are your emergency funds. We recommend to set aside three to six months of expenses. So how do you grow the funds in this bucket? You can look at our FSM auto sweep account. You can consider some of the cash fund or money market funds. You can also look at some of the short duration bond funds like the Lion Global Short Duration Bond or the United SGD Fund. And lastly, you may also consider our MAPS conservative portfolio. For the second bucket, it has a shorter time frame of not more than three years for short-term liquidity needs. This could be used for your house renovation, for a new car, or for travels. So fluctuations in this bucket should be minimal and returns are more predictable. So how do you grow the wealth in this bucket? You can look at the retail bonds, like the Fraser's Property or Temasek Retail, some of the short duration bond funds I mentioned earlier, like Lion Global and also United. And you can also look at MAPS, our moderately conservative portfolio. And you also can look at ETF, the Nikko AM uh, SGD Investment Grade Bond ETF listed on the SGX. Next, for the third bucket, it has a medium time frame of up to five years. So link to, it's linked to your financial goals, be it a town, uh, down payment for, for big ticket items like property. And the choice of a portfolio would depend on one's uh, risk tolerance. So you can look at the balance funds and uh, equity funds such as the First Central Bridge, Schroeder Multi-Asset, Infinity Stock, uh, Global Stock Index. You can also uh, look at the FSSA dividend advantage. You can also look at individual REITs or REITs ETF, such as the Nikko AM STC Asia REIT. Uh, called CFA. Uh, you can also look at the MAPS balance portfolio. You can also consider uh, some of the callable retail bonds like the Astria 6 and the fixed maturity bonds like the Masek retail bond. Lastly, for the fourth bucket, it is for the longer term investment. It's the, it depends on the time frame of your needs. So you may use time as your ally to ride through market volatility. So for this category, you can consider equity funds that, such as uh, Strawder Asian Growth, the Nikko AM Shenton Global Opportunities, and also the Franklin Technology A. You can also look at the individual stocks and REITs, or you can consider our MAPS, Moderately Aggressive or Aggressive Portfolio. So after knowing how to allocate your funds into the different buckets, here are some investment strategies to adopt. First is to review and rebalance. Just like managing a football team, you will have to review your players' performance from time to time. So to take profit and cut losses when necessary. Should one part of your portfolio outperform and suddenly constitute a large percentage of your investment, you can reallocate the profit into other segments which offers better value. Second is dollar cost average, DCA. As markets don't move up in a straight line, adopting a regular savings plan, RSP, will allow you to dollar cost average into a selected investments. By setting aside a fixed sum of money and investing on a regular basis, it will allow you to buy more units when prices are low and less units when prices are high. So this will smoothen out the returns in the long run and ensure that you will never be invested at a peak. Lastly, is do not time the market. One of the frequently asked questions that we get as an advisor is whether it is a good time to invest. Trying to time the market when, the next, when is the next best opportunity and to predict the direction of the market is a fool's errand, as it is nearly impossible to get it right consistently 100% of the time. When the markets are weak and after sell-off in all markets, like what we witnessed last year, seeing your portfolio value decline drastically, it often results in emotional decision-making. So staying invested is more important than knowing when to invest. So these are the products available on uh, FSM that you can use to build your investment portfolio and your various buckets I described earlier. As markets don't go up in a straight line, investing via regular savings plan allows you to dollar cost average and smoothen the overall portfolio returns over time. You can take advantage of the RSP that are available for unit trust, for managed portfolio and selected ETFs in our ETF focus list to do your dollar cost averaging. Do note that for the RSP, there is a no minimum commitment period and the investors can choose to terminate and stop the investment 
anytime with no penalties. Firstly, I would like to talk about uh, unit trust investments. So we do a yearly, view, yearly review of our choice of funds and compile them into a recommended funds report, which you can access for free on our FSM webpage. This can be a starting point for new investors if you don't know where to look. These funds are chosen purely based on merits. So we look at quantitative factors such as a performance, risk management, and expense ratio. We also look at qualitative factors such as the fund's consistency in the investment approach and also key personnel and stability of the management team. So our platform is also equipped with tools for you to shortlist funds and compare the performances with selected index. This is useful if you wish to see that the active fund is uh, able to outperform an index or comparing, or comparing funds in a similar investment space. There is also an online advisory to request where you can uh, get in touch with the advisory team. So a short questionnaire will be prompted online to find out more about your risk profile and financial goals. So having known this, we can propose a portfolio tailored for you. So this is available for RSP. So you can start investing from as little as $100 a month. Secondly, I would like to introduce the ETF regular savings plan. So we have about 62 ETFs in the ETF focus list, including a technical place into the Chinese uh, tech, global financials, semiconductors, cloud computing ETFs, and more. So the minimum investment is for $50 a month. And uh, currently, we are running a promotion where the ETF RSP subscription is fees are waived until July. So after going through so many different products, and if you're still lost, fret not. We have a managed portfolio, MAPS, where we do the homework for you and invest on your behalf. So our dedicated team of portfolio managers and research analysts will study the full spectrum of unit trusts and ETFs available to select the right products for our portfolios. We monitor the portfolios daily, digesting global financial and economic data and events or leveraging on our regional research team for in-depth analysis and insights. Unlike the other robo-advisors out there which invest mainly in ETFs and uses algorithms to rebalance the investments, this portfolio holds mostly actively managed unit trust funds, and we play an active role in selection and weightage of each individual product. Our value, valuation-driven approach allows us to uncover the value, and there is research done behind each and every move or decision. On a quarterly basis, we conduct webinars to inform you of changes made during the quarter and how our portfolio will be positioned moving forward. So as mentioned earlier, this is available for regular savings plan, RSP, and you can start investing from $500 a month. So I hope that everyone found this uh, short session meaningful uh, and to learn something new today. So I know that market swings can rattle even the most seasoned investors' nerves. So, but get comfortable with, with volatility as it is part and parcel of uh, investing. If you wish to have a chat with us regarding how to construct your portfolio or to hear our latest view on the current market outlook and investment ideas, Please feel free to reach us via any of these methods and we will surely get back to you. With this last slide, I shall end off my presentation. Thank you for your attention and I shall pass the time now to Brian from Franklin Templeton. Brian, please. Thank you and good evening, everybody. My name is Brian and I'm from Franklin Templeton. So today's topic is retirement planning. How, when and how to start and who should start. So you have heard from our previous two speakers on what is key to look out for when it's retirement, when it comes to retirement planning and over the longer term, what are the tools available? What are the methods available when it comes towards retirement planning? Now, over here at Franklin Templeton, we do believe that investments, long-term investments should form, uh, should form the majority of retirees' portfolios over the longer term. Right, investments is one of the key ways that you can grow your wealth and over the long term preserve your wealth, all ensuring you have a comfortable nest egg, right, for you to begin as you embark on your retirement journey over the longer term. So today I want to share with you what our thoughts on retirements are when it comes to investing and to share with you a couple of investment ideas, right, that you can start to look out for and consider if you haven't already started, uh, as you look out to plan for your retirement. 
So I'm just moving over to my next slide and I hope you can see it on your end. So I just really wanted to start off by giving you a very quick introduction into Franklin Templeton. So today we are one of the largest independent asset managers in the world. We currently have assets under management, just about one and a half trillion dollars. Uh, together with that, we have seven decades of investment experience and we employ um, close to 1,200 investment professionals to manage uh, clients' portfolios and investments. We also have a very broad global footprint. Um, we have a very large uh, footprint globally, and this allows us to continue to support closely our clients' needs. So really just to share with you, every, share with everyone on what uh, our asset mix currently looks like. So today we have just close to 650 billion managed under fixed income. Uh, we have another 500 billion managed in equity products. We also have a good mix and range of alternatives, multi-asset and money market strategies. Okay, so you can see that for us here at Franklin Tumbleton, we are a diversified asset manager. We are also diversified both by clientele type and region type. So we are a truly diversified asset manager. And today I'm very happy to join everyone here to really share with you on a few ideas when it comes to investing for retirement. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, we do believe that investments can form a part of every retirement every retiree's plan as all of us at one point or another will reach a retirement age and all of us i'm sure hopes to retire comfortably okay and at the same time i would want to stress okay that there is no single solution for retirement planning okay this is uh the, this is more or less quite true wherever you are in the world okay uh wherever or wherever stage you are in your retirement planning. There is no single solution that can adequately address all of it, but what we can do is to maximize and optimize things that we are able to capitalize on for the longer term. So let me just share with you this very interesting chart. There are three key phases when it comes to retirement planning for all of us, okay? The first one is accumulation. Okay, you can see it on the left-hand slide here on my mouse. Following after accumulation is what we call a phase called retirement transition. Okay. And the last phase is what we call post retirement drawdown. Okay. So when it comes to the accumulation phase, right, typically it would might you might be a working adult, right? Accumulating uh your wealth and cash over this period of time. In terms of participants' financial context and needs, they tend to be quite homogenous. Okay, we tend to experience similar objectives for uh, participants who are preparing for the accumulation phase of their retirement. Now, when it comes to retirement transition, this is when you are starting to think about what retirement looks like. Okay, typically you might be, you know, approaching 50, you might have maybe another 10 to 15 years of working life before you actually do retire. Needs tend to be diverging, right? Because people tend to prepare for retirement and they start to think how retirement looks like. And of course, everyone's retirement will not look like the same. Lastly, it's post-retirement drawdown. This is when you have already retired, okay? These, during this period of time, context and needs tend to be what we call heterogeneous. So they tend to be quite diverging. They tend to be quite varied, right? Because everybody's retirement needs are different. Typically, for participants for people who are during these three phases in your accumulation stage we observe that uh, participants like to save at a sufficient rate and use that for investing as you prepare for retirement this is when you start to see diverging needs <clears throat> and after retirement your post retirement drawdown we tend to observe a need for uh, retirees to generate income as you continue sus to sustain your golden years as you age. Another way to think about it is to think about, you know, the what we call the pyramid of wealth allocation, right? So typically this applies in any phase of the, the, reti the retirement planning like I shared previously. Typically, uh, assets can be allocated throughout this pyramid. Okay, at the top is where you talk about growth assets. Okay, assets that can produce strong long-term capital gains. Uh, these are the growth portions, which tends to capture growth 
in the short to medium term. We also, in the middle of this pyramid, we also recognize that there is a portion called global equities, right? So this tends to be more diversified <clears throat> global nature for portfolios. These are what we call the equity core portion for longer term growth. And the, ba the base of the pyramid is what we call the cushioning portion, right? So throughout this whole allocation of wealth in this pyramid, the typically for, you know, for a me medium risk type of uh, investor, we expect this income generating instruments and or liquid assets, and that includes cash, okay? That includes cash to account for about 50% of your asset base, okay? So another way to think about how you can gradually allocate your wealth and even change between the top to the middle to the bottom of the pyramid is to refer to how wealth is typically allocated, you know, for a medium uh, size risk type of investor. When we think about retire retirement and planning for your retirement and over the longer term, right, one of the things to take into consideration as well is risk profiling. As I mentioned earlier, retirement needs are different. And at the same time, Risk profiling are, is also different. It depends on your ability right, to take on risk in the markets and how much you can anticipate and adjust for volatility within portfolios. Right? And there are a few ways which you have heard earlier, such as uh, dollar cost averaging, that can allow you to smooth out those volatilities. But before you even think about that, uh, one thing that is worth thinking about is the profiling of your risk as an investor. There are a few risk profiles that we can see here, and this is just a general rule of thumb. Aggressive growth tends to be just 100% invested in stocks. You need to have quite a high threshold for volatility in order to be an aggressive growth investor. And then you move down the spectrum to sort of a growth, to moderate growth, conservative growth, and even an income generating type of investor. Now, in terms of looking at the right allocation, definitely the first thing you need to do is to speak to your financial advisor because he or she will be the one to, who will be able to assess your financial health and provide you with the proper guidance. Some things that he or she will ask you to think about is your objective, right? Your retirement, is it a goal or do you just want to have it but you don't require it? What is your time horizon? What are your liquidity profiles, right, uh, that you can accompany your risk and your risk profile and allocation, and including external factors like market fluctuations that you need to take into consideration, which would then help you to derive the right allocation. So as I mentioned earlier, there is no right solution or, or there's no one single solution when it comes to retirement planning. But you, there are a few ways that you can think of in terms of which phase you are in during retirement, what is or what does your wealth allocation pyramid look like, and even think about risk profiling uh, that you can take into consideration, right? As you think about investing over the long term for your retirement. Okay, so building a retirement portfolio. Again, you have heard about, you know, in the last few um, speakers talk about, you know, ways that you can plan for retirement, the ways FSM as a fund platform can allow you to do so. So what I really want to share with you is to accompany that conversations in terms of thinking about suitable uh, investment strategies that you can think of built for both the more aggressive investor as well as a slightly more conservative investor and somewhere in between those two, okay? So the first area which I want to talk about is on US equities, right? So US equities tend to be suited more for a more aggressive type of investor given that it is an equity asset class. Uh, and over the longer term, we tend to expect US equities to generate positive returns over the longer term. Okay, there may be some intermittent volatility and that is expected. But as history has shown us, equities as an asset class tend to generate strong returns over the longer term and that ties in very well with someone who is retiring. Over here at Franklin Templeton, our flagship US equity strategy is called Franklin US Opportunities Fund. This is a unit trust that captures leading US companies that are poised for growth okay, over a full market cycle. So what we do is we invest in the best opportunities among some of the fast and best quality businesses in the US, regardless of sector or market capitalization size. Three key things to remember when you think about Franklin US Opportunities Fund. We have exposure to leading US growth companies, 
He utilized a very high conviction investment approach and the investment framework combines growth, quality and valuation within our fund and the portfolio. Now, why US, right? Because when you think about, oh, I want to invest for the long term, should I look at the US or should I look at other countries? I would like to make the case and uh, try to help you provide some background right into how come the US might be a more attractive investment destination. One of the things that we notice is that compared to other regions and other countries, the US continues and probably can continue to offer attractive, high quality businesses and high quality businesses tend to do well in the stock market. Okay, think about companies that have done well over the long term. There's one very common uh, underlying thread that runs through it. Typically, these companies have high quality businesses and a lot of all these high quality businesses can actually be found in the US. When it comes to you know, valuation, for those of you investors right here who are concerned about, oh, valuations in the US look a bit high, which tends to be the case, generally speaking, we have observed that while valuations may be high as measured by price to earnings ratio, one of the things is that investors are compensated for taking on that higher valuation by observing this higher return on equity for US companies. So investors are investing in the US who are investing in the US over the longer term may experience higher valuation compared to all these other regions that you see here. At the same time, we observe that investors get paid better, okay, when they take on that higher valuation in the US. Some of you might be thinking, okay, so what comes next for the US market, especially over the longer term, right? And I'll talk about that later and which are areas that we continue to be very excited about. But just to focus on the current state of the market in the US, right? For those of you investors who have been following closely the markets, be it, uh, you know, especially these past few weeks, US markets continue to hit record highs, right? At once every few days, be it the Dow Jones, the S&P or the NASDAQ. So today, what we actually see is that if you look at the key sectors in the US, these sectors as we talk about reopening in the US, right? These sectors continue to do generally well. There are some divergences. Some sectors like IT, communication services, and consumer companies tend to be tend to have higher valuations. But what is good about that is that these valuations are accompanied with stronger growth rates, okay, as measured by EPS growth, earnings per share growth. Okay, some sectors which are just starting to take part in the reopening, right? areas like consumer staples, financials, industrials, they are lagging a bit in terms of uh, valuation, so they might look more attractive from a valuation potential. At the same time, earnings per share or expected earnings are still lagging, right? Some of its uh, faster growing peers. Looking ahead, what we anticipate is we expect these sectors to consolidate, right? Because when we talk about reopening of the economy, we expect a lot of sectors in the US to actually benefit right, from this broad reopening of the economy. I think this slide that you see here, thinking about the stock investment opportunity, and I talked about why the US can be a strong investment destination, not just in the market conditions that we are today, but over the longer term. It's really because if you were to look at just the projected GDP growth for the US economy today, right, for 2020, compared to other developed economies, the US continues to be in a very very strong position. GDP growth for US this year is expected to top 6.5%. And this is provided, these are projections provided by the IMF. And this far surpasses that of other developed economies. So this puts the US in a very attractive position to potentially provide more gains, to potentially provide more uh, attractive investment returns over the longer term. And one of the things is after we are I'm um, done with this initial phase of strong GDP growth. What we anticipate the US to continue to be supported is the very strong potential infrastructure spending plans that will spend the next half to full decade ahead, right? And this is not something which a lot of other developed economies have put in place. Right. But the US today has plans to spend on its infrastructure trillions of dollars potentially. And this is expected to generate sustainable growth in the country, not just for this year, but potentially in the years ahead of us. Right. So this makes hopefully a strong case over the longer term for investors like yourselves to potentially consider the US market 
as a strong investment destination. So for those of you who are keen to find out more about US Opportunities Fund, uh, this is just a very quick summary of the strategy. This is a unit trust that aims to achieve capital appreciation. So for those of you who are looking for income payouts, right? So this is not a strategy that pays out income, right? This is an equity strategy that aims to capture capital gains. The focus is on strong, sustainable growth companies in the US. The fund was incepted in 2000. Okay, so this is a strategy that has a very long track record, more than 20 years and counting. Today, the fund size is just above 8 billion of assets under management. Uh, and excuse me. And one of the things that we note is that from a rating standpoint, the fund continues to be rated very well uh, from a fund rating agency called Morningstar. And what is interesting about this is that the fund is available for investors to invest via of quite a variety of ways. You have cash investments, and these are primarily US dollar, Singapore dollar, and Singapore dollar hedge share class. If you're an investor who wants to invest using your CPF account, this fund can accept investments from clients' CPF OA account. And if you have an SRS account, this fund is also available for SRS account investing. So you can see that there is a quite a wide variety of ways for you to invest in this uh, unit trust. For more information, please do look up um, this fund with its corresponding details on FSM1. We have this available on FSM and do look it up if you want to find out more about this investment. Now, some of you might think, okay, I like US equities, but it tends to be a bit more aggressive for my liking. Right? I want to think about something that is more conservative, something which does not uh, take on too much volatility or potential volatility, something that can generate maybe lower but more sustainable type of returns over the longer term. One of the areas, uh, one of the strategies that you can consider is from a specialist investment manager that is with Franklin Templeton and that is Western Asset Management. So Western Asset is one of the specialist investment manager under Franklin Templeton. Uh, they are a globally diversify and integrated fixed income manager, right? And today they continue to source ideas and investment solutions worldwide for its, uh, for their platform of fixed income strategies and portfolios. The key area or the key strategy that we have here for our clients here in Singapore is called the Lake Mason Western Asset Global Bond Trust. Okay, so this is a fund that falls under us here at Franklin Templeton. So as the name implies, this is a global bond unit trust. Okay, it's called the Western Asset Global Bond Trust. So for clients out there who are thinking about, you know, taking on a more less aggressive approach, right, over the long term as you think about investing for your retirement, why do you want to consider this trust? This is a global fixed income strategy that is global and diversified with a very strong allocation in more than 10 countries. We have non-USD exposure, sorry, non-SGD exposure uh, actively hedged back to our SING dollar. Okay, and this helps to minimize foreign exchange volatility. So this is a product that is very well suited for the Singaporean investor. This strategy, apart from cash investments, is also included under CPFIS scheme where CPF members, you can use your OA and SA account to invest in this unit trust. The fund or the trust has a very strong investment grade credit quality of double A at this point in time. So you can see credit quality is very strong. It is a diversified global bond uh, fund, which can be a very strong complement to either your cash portfolio or even your CPF investments and CPF assets. This is also an award-winning fund. For 2019 and 2020, we have won a very well-recognized industry award from Benchmark Magazine or Benchmark uh, Publication, which is the best global, fix, best global fixed income fund in local currency. Okay, so just to really end off into really helping you understand more about the Global Bond Trust is that this is a strategy that potentially provides you strong diversification at the same time while giving you strong outperformance potentially over bank rates, right? And we all know that bank rates, they continue to be very, very low. So this is a strategy that can help you to do 
slightly better than that. Okay, and you can see across this table of risk against return, this is a unit trust that sits quite low in the risk spectrum and also giving investors a suitable type of return over the longer term. So for more details, again, like I mentioned earlier, please do uh, check the fund out, find out more details on the fund on FSM. Okay, again, this fund is available on FSM and you can find out more details and whether, it's, and whether it is a strategy that you're interested or suitable in for you to allocate to over the longer term. All right, so this brings me to the end of my sharing session. Thank you everyone for your time. Let me hand the time back to our host at FSM. Thank you, Joel, Darren, and Brian for the sharing. And thank you to all our audience for joining this webinar. We hope you managed to pick up some useful tips and strategies for your retirement planning. And we wish you all the best in your investment journey with FSM1. If you've benefited from this session, do register and join us on the 7th of July at 6.30 p.m. for FSM Mid-Year Review. Our analysts will be discussing some important matters about the investment climate and will also be bringing you through the outlook for second half 2021 and to shine more light on the opportunities that lie ahead. You can learn more and register in the link provided in the chat function. Thank you once again for joining us and have a great evening.